Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. One of the hardest things that people find is when they have to create a uniqueness. They think that their uniqueness needs to be a company-wide uniqueness. And usually that's not how we pick anything in life. If you think of any company, say maybe a shoe company like Nike, do you pick it because of the uniqueness? Well. If you do, then what is the uniqueness? When you come to psychotactics, do you pick it because of the uniqueness? You still don't know the uniqueness, do you? And this is the problem. You have a good feeling about it, which is a completely different topic. That is the philosophy of the company. But uniqueness, as it used to exist with Volvo and FedEx and all of those brands that you've read about in marketing books, well, that doesn't exist anymore, that used to exist at one point in time, it doesn't anymore. And so uniqueness has to be for every single one of your products or services. I'll just say that again, every single product or service. So if you go to the Psychotactic site, there are products on pricing or article writing or cartooning or whatever. And every single one of them has to have their uniqueness because that is what you're buying. You are at that point, you're looking at the product or the service and you're making a decision. So it has to have a uniqueness. Why? Because there are lots of article writing courses out there. Some of them are cheaper. Some might be more expensive. Some might be longer, shorter. And sometimes the uniqueness might be within that brand itself. You might be choosing between the info products course or the article writing course or the cartooning course. And you have to decide, okay, why am I making this decision? When we go about creating uniqueness, we use three systems. And this is something that you can use as well. When you want to get the uniqueness across what would you do? Well, people tend to pick their uniqueness based on one, ease or difficulty, two, a specific promise or result, and the third is the avoidance of downsides. And talking about downsides, I have to apologize in advance because this whole podcast, it'll sound like a bit of an infomercial. Why? Because a lot of the products and services that I'm going to be talking about belong to psychotactics. And why aren't we taking examples from outside? Because it would take too much time to go looking for all of these specific ways in which this could be solved. I could do it, but I'm feeling a little lazy today. It's Friday. So we're going to stick with psychotactics. Sorry for the infomercial. I'll try to make it as entertaining as possible. Let's go back to the three ways in which you can create your uniqueness, either for yourself or for clients. Let's start out with the ease or difficulty. So if you go to the psychotactic site and you look at some of the products or services, then this is the way you'd work out ease or difficulty. Let's say we took the article writing course. At one point, it was doing pretty well, but then it took off. And the reason why it took off was because we added a uniqueness. What did we say? We said it was the toughest writing course in the world. Is it the toughest writing course in the world? No. There might be other courses. There are new article writing courses out every day. But it gave you a reasoning why it is the toughest writing course and how it makes you a better writer because of that toughness. 
people are rising to that challenge. So in this case, ease is not the factor that people are looking for. They would like to be good writers. They would like for a magic wand to be tapped on the head. They would like for some kind of Cinderella situation, but they know that maybe that's not the case. And so difficulty becomes the uniqueness. On the other hand, we sell a product that you probably never heard of. And this is a course in InDesign. Now, we create these really nice ebooks, and you've read some of them. All of them are done in InDesign. If you were to study InDesign, usually it would take you between 12 to 18 hours. So you'd have to go through the entire course. And then you'd have to go over it because you've forgotten bits and pieces of it. So let's say another 12 to 18 hours. And then you go, oh, wait, the reason why I got into this was because I wanted to create an ebook. I don't really care about InDesign that much. I'm still looking for that magic wand to be tapped on my head. So in this case, what we're looking for is they're just looking to get everything done quickly. And what we say is that you can get other courses that are cheaper, but with this, you get the whole template. And once you have the template, you can learn this in one hour. In one hour from now, you will be able to use and design and create your ebook. So that's ease and that's difficulty. When you're dealing with clients, if you're advising clients, then you look at this factor of ease or difficulty and see how you can specify that ease or difficulty, and that creates a uniqueness for them. But the same thing applies to you. If you've got a product or service, or you've got multiple products or services, you go, am I going to do all of this stuff? Well, go with it. Are we making it easy? Or are we making it more difficult? Because both of them work when you specify it correctly. And that's the first thing that we've covered today. But we don't have to stop there. We can go to the second thing, of course. The second thing that we're talking about is specific results. Have you heard the poem, I am a teapot, fat and stout, this is my handle, this is my spout. When the water boils, hear me shout, then pick me up and pour me out. That is an ad. That's an ad for a teapot. It's got all of the features. This is my handle, this is my spout. It shouts, that's another feature. And it's fat and stout, which means you probably can have a lot of tea in that kettle. The question that arises is, where is the result? Because all we have are features and more features and features, uh, they go to benefits. So you have a feature because there's a benefit. You go, where is the result? How are we going to create any uniqueness from this? What you have to understand is that the way that uniqueness comes about is to make a list of features and then go, I'm going to pick this one feature because this is going to get a result for the client. With the teapot, maybe it's really hot, but it's shouting and you can just pick it up and pour it out, which means no burns. So that's a kind of result. And I'll give you another crockery example. At some point in time, we were getting fed up of plates that were chipping that were getting scratched. We happened to be in the shopping center buying something else, and we noticed that someone was selling non-scratch plates, and that got our attention. So that became a uniqueness because it's offering a result. It's a simple one, but it's a result. When we create a product or a service at Psychotactics, this is the first question that we ask ourselves, which is, what is the result? What's going to happen when people get to the end of this? Hopefully, something's going to happen in the middle and towards the end, and then finally at the end. What's going to happen? With the cartooning course, there is a lot of stuff that we cover. So we cover shapes and backgrounds and color and contrast, all of these things. And what we want to do is we want to pick up one of those features 
and that is the one probably the clients want the most or the ones that we determine they want the most. In our case, we found out that most of the clients definitely wanted a character like Quattro, which is drawn for psychotactics, which is what you see on the psychotactics website everywhere. So they wanted this character, and and if that's the result that they want, then we go, here's what we are going to promise. That is, you're going to learn to create and draw your character so that you can use it in blogs and email, etc. With the sales page course, we had how to create a sales page in under three days and better than most professional copywriters. And you can do this with any of your products or services because every single product or service, no matter what you make, whatever you produce, whatever you sell, is always built because it's somehow different or better than the competition. That's why it exists in the first place. You shouldn't just be opening another cafe and thinking, oh, yeah, well, we're just opening one and we'll see what happens. No, you're doing it specifically because it's different, because you're creating some kind of result. And so we've looked at two things. The first is that there's either ease or difficulty. But the second, and this applies to all your products and services, is the result. What is the result that people are going to get? And with that, we move to the third part which is slightly surprising because it's called avoidance of downsides. Let's say you go to the garage and you want them to go through a warrant of fitness. And they look through the whole car and then they tell you, You know, there's no problem now, but three months from now, this tire would need to be replaced. Now, notice they don't sell tires, so it's not something that they're making money off, but they're telling you about a downside and how you can avoid that downside. Downsides tend to be something that's pretty obvious to everybody, and then at other times, not so obvious because they can't see what would happen and how they would have any problem down the line. So we'll take both those examples. We'll look at the unobvious downside. We're looking at psychotactics, the infomercial continues. So this is the pre-sale course. And what pre-sale is, is how do you create this anticipation so that when you are selling your product or service, people buy it on the spot and you're not constantly marketing. So pre-sell is all of the things that you do to make sure that the event goes as it should, just like a wedding should, like everybody has to show up, everybody has to be dressed, everybody has to do this and do that. And that's an analogy for how pre-sell works. So what is the downside? The downside is that you create a perfect product, you create a perfect sales page, and then nobody buys. That is the downside. People don't realize that. They think that if you create a perfect product and you create a perfect sales page, that clients will just buy. They'll just show up and they'll buy and you put the right price and they'll buy. And it doesn't work that way. And many of us have found that out. The way it works is through creating anticipation where the customer goes from, I'm not interested, I don't know anything, to I want to know more, I want to know more. And that's what pre-sell is about. You're alerting them to the downside that they can't see. So that's a downside that they can't see. The second kind of downside is the obvious downside. The uniqueness of dartboard pricing is that you can increase your prices by 10 to 15% and not lose clients. So this is important because losing clients is a big problem. Anyone can theoretically increase their prices by 10 to 15%. We can just go, oh, we're increasing our prices by 15%. But then there's that fear, which is why we don't increase it. 
So how do you do it without losing clients? These are downsides, and people will go to a lot of extremes to avoid the downsides. And that brings us to the end of this podcast, where we covered three points. And the three points are that you can base your uniqueness on how people pick stuff. And the first thing is that they're looking for ease, but they're also looking for difficulty or challenge. The two of the fonts is not one that's easy. It's a difficult bicycle race. People sign up for it based on its difficulty. People also sign up for ease. So ease or difficulty is the first one. The second one is what every product or service should have, which is a specific promise or result. It's a given. And the third one is the avoidance of downsides. And some of these downsides are very obvious, they're blatant, and at other times the client has no idea what's coming down the track. Absolutely no idea. And you have to alert them about those problems. That's how you create your uniqueness. Now, what are you going to do next? What's the one thing that you can do? The first thing that you should do is start out with just what result are you going to get? Because all products, all services are going to have a result. Once you've done that, maybe just move to the next stage and look at the downside. What is the downside that's going to affect them? So dartboard pricing, as you saw, has the result, which is how to increase your prices by 10 to 15%. But then it avoids the downside, which is without losing clients. Just the result itself will do the job if you want to make it even stronger, even more effective. Want people to pay attention and to remember what you've said. Then you add the downside. So you have the problem and the solution in your uniqueness, and that really gets attention. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in Psychotactic Science. On the 10th of June, we're going to have the startup series. This is not a live course. It's a recorded videos. And it's not Zoom videos either. They're all professionally made. And yes, there are slides and there's this calming voice that you're hearing right now. I think you'll like it. And the uniqueness, and I'm saying the uniqueness here, is that most startup books, they just talk about work, work, and even more work. And this one is designed to get you started up with work, but also to have a life, just like we do at Psychotactics, and we've always done, which is why we have this three-month vacation podcast, but actually live that life. It's unique for that reason, setting up a business in a completely different way and then keeping it going in that way so that you don't just get sucked up in work, because work is fine, but up to a point. Go to psychotactics.com slash startup and you'll find that you're going to get some goodies. So go there today and judge for yourself. Also, if you have friends and they have products, they have services, they've just opened up a cafe, they've opened up a cafe for the second time and they don't know why they struggled the first time, well, send them this podcast because it will help them create that uniqueness and that'll give them a boost and they'll be able to define themselves in a better way. In the next podcast, I'm going to talk about the uniqueness in a different way, which is the philosophy of a business, which is also a uniqueness. It just doesn't sound like one, but it is something that attracts people to you. So that's the next one. I'll say bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? I don't know whether you know this, but when we have live workshops, like say in Singapore or Brussels or somewhere, we travel with Elmo. And this is a huge doll. It takes up, I don't know, it takes up half the suitcase. It's pretty big. Recently, and recently is like seven years ago now, <laughs> we bought another Elmo. And it's not because the first Elmo was feeling sad or lonely or anything. 
But there was a uniqueness of the second Elmo. The first Elmo, what it did was it sang and it danced. And of course, the people that come to the workshop, they're quite happy to join in the Elmo dance. And so they sing and dance. But the second Elmo, all it does is laugh. It laughs like crazy. It just belly laughs. It's so funny. So that's uniqueness in the sense that we already have one Elmo and now we want another Elmo. And yeah, if we want to take both the Elmos, we have to take a separate suitcase with two Elmos. Imagine how that looks when it's going through a security check. One big bag with two Elmos in it. That's it from Psychotactics Land. I'll say bye for now and I'll see you in 5000 BC. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs>